time you got here? You planning on sleeping through the first week of your job? No, I wouldn't miss it for anything. Well, almost anything. With all these mud puddles, a young lady could be in distress. problem, Miss Woodruff. The angels do fly. Well, I believe I need some help. You won't forget about tonight, will you? I'm looking forward to it. So am I. Cowboy, get off. I didn't know it was private. Yes, it's private. Get off. That hat's mine, too. I said, get off. Now, get off. Get off. I'm not wearing a gun. Conjure, toss him a gun. Pick it up. You might as well. One way or another, I'm going to kill you. Pick it up. Try it again. Pick it up. What is this? Some kind of cat and mouse game? Let me have your gun. You just stay out of it. Hold it. He said stay out of it. It's between the two of them. If you think I'm going to stand by while a big man bully rags a kid. Oh, you got another thought coming, mister. Now you better keep your man back, Ramrod. Unless you want us in on it, too. Hold him back for what? This two-bit puppy baiting session he's got going here. It's a fair fight, your man against ours. Fair? You call this fair? Between the two, your man's the only one toting that gun. The kid can pick up the gun any time he wants to. Pick it up. What's going on here? That's the big man here. Dell? I'm teaching a wet behind the ears kid a lesson in manners. That's enough. Nope. He still has it coming. Only you're doing all the shooting. Well, he's got a gun now. All he has to do is pick it up. What'd he do? Putting a high price on a pair of pants, aren't you? Maybe you'd like to pay for them. Any time, mister. Dell! Was it done deliberately? Deliberate enough.
Gun's been nicked a few times, probably blow up in your face. Just let him be. He ain't gonna get the chance to pull that trigger. Mr. Woodruff, get him out of here. Dell. Back to the house. Gwent Simon, get him back to the herd. The rest of you men get to work. That includes my people, too. All right. Mr. Woodruff, I'd like you to get rid of that man. Dell, he's my top hand. He's been with me since I started here. You telling me no? I'm saying Dell wouldn't flare up without a reason. That boy must have provoked it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pull out. We're too far apart, I'm afraid. Because of a quarrel between a couple of hot-headed cowboys? <laughs> That's the way it looked to you? Mr. Yates, you contracted to deliver 750 head of Woodruff cattle to market. I've already started my road branding. Yeah, well, I've lost two days driving time coming over here. We made a deal. Well, get yourself another man. Where? When? A man's word counts for something. We shook hands over this. Well, look at it this way. The way things stand right now, it wouldn't take much to get lead flying between our two outfits. You willing to risk that? I'll take care of my men, if you'll take care of yours. All right. I'll be over this afternoon to finish signing those papers. Whatever it was, it was for me to settle. You should never have come out there. I just wanted to see what was happening. Child, a sordid quarrel between two cowboys is nothing for you to be concerned with. The only sordid thing about it is Del Lingman. Why, he'd have killed that boy if you and Mr. Yates hadn't have stopped him. Perhaps the boy deserved it. You don't believe that. You seem to know more about the boy than I do. Have you had occasion to talk to him before? Enough to know he would not have started that fight. Father, you can't keep Del Lingman on now. Vicky, I need Del Lingman. I've kept you away from the hard, practical things that are necessary to run a big cattle ranch. You just don't know. I'd be lost without Del. All the same, I, I still wish you'd let him go. I can't. He's my right hand. All right. We'll let Dale stay here and run the ranch and... and let's you and I go back home to Savannah. Honey, this is our home now. Why? Surely we have enough money now to go back to where you're respected, to where people have manners and breeding. Isn't it time we went back to where we belong? This is where we belong. Small misunderstanding. I heard there was a lot more to it than that. How'd it happen? It was a question of mud between me and a man named Lingman. A little bit on his pants, but my face got rubbed in it. Dell Lingman? Woodruff's top hand. Tell me about Woodruff. Woodruff? I don't know anything about him. Why? Curiosity. I'm thinking about Lingman. And maybe you better start thinking about him a little, too. How did it all get started, Jed? This business of every man wearing a gun on his hip out here. It's a hard country. Out here, a man had to be ready for anything. I ought to wear a gun. You? I'm a Westerner now. Not a southerner. It's time I acted the part. Lend me a gun belt, Jed. No. Then I'll have to get my own. Kid, he'll cut you in half. I'm gonna have to fight that man. Don't you ever try. 
There's no help for it, Jed. I'm looking for a man named Del Lingman. for a man named Del Lingman. I hear you're looking for a man named Del Lingman. I hear you're pretty good at browbeating kids who don't even carry a gun. I wonder what you'd be like against a man wearing a gun. What's the matter? Can't that kid fight his own battles? I'm ready to draw. Get! Keep out of this, Rowdy. You keep that gun in this holster. This is personal. You draw and you come out of this, you better keep right on riding. Don't come back to that herd. You gotta do like he says, mister, and quick. Dell, you go on back to the house. I wanna talk to you now. trying to do? Get yourself killed? You think I can't draw fast enough to take him? There's something you don't know, Rowdy. That kid's gonna put on a gun belt and come looking for Lingman. Don't stop a killing with a killing. All we have to do is keep him apart for two days, and we'll be out of here. Let's get back to the herd. Jasper says he's going to dinner with you, too. Says the Woodruff girl invited him. Hey, boy. Yeah? Hi, Dale. I didn't think you'd be here, but I saw your light on. Where would I be? Well, there's some kind of a party going on at the big house. So? So, I thought maybe you'd be up there. Get your foot off that chair. Uh, there are three horses tied up out in front. I saw them. They belong to Yates? Colby? And that kid? You got something on your mind, Seth. Well, I figure with that kid being at that party with Vicky and all, uh... Get your foot off that chair. Get out. Bedford, you haven't said much this evening, but from your accent, uh, it seems you're from the South. I am, sir. Uh, may one ask from where? Charleston. Savannah. But you never told me that. Well, that's where father's from. Perhaps you remember the name? Mason Woodruff? Well, Savannah is a large city, Miss Woodruff. One cannot know everyone in it. I don't recall the name, but I do remember your father's face. It seems to me that I've seen it in the newspapers. Well, father. The young man is mistaken. 
But you can't be sure, Father. A man in your position may easily be in the newspapers and not be aware of it. Well, when was this? Shortly after the war. Well, you were there then. It was a long time ago, my dear. I would think Mr. Bedford was too young to be much involved in the Civil War years. Too young to have served in the war, sir. Not too young to remember. You are mistaken, sir. Father, is something the matter? I'm very tired, my dear. I think we should end this. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, we got to be in the saddle kind of early in the morning. Thank you for a fine evening, ma'am. Thank you. I I'm glad you could come, all of you. Mr. Woodruff? You may show Mr. Lingman in. Yes, sir. Yes, Dale? They didn't mean to break anything up, Mr. Woodruff, but about tomorrow. We're working Crooked Snake Creek first thing in the morning. Thought maybe you had special orders. Uh, we can find our way out. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodruff. Good night, sir. two accounts. Whatever it is between you and Woodruff, you let it lie. And when Lingman came in, you kept your mouth shut. Now, let's get going to camp. I got some business here first. Look, if you wanted to press this thing, why didn't you do it when you were in there? Tradition, Mr. Yates. You don't fight a man when you're a guest in someone's house. Well, you're not gonna wait out here for him, so get up on your horse. I can't do that, Jed. Have you any idea what you'll be facing? I've held a gun in my hand before. Yeah, yeah, for shooting jackrabbits, but this man knows what he's doing. Starting from an even draw, he'd have a bullet in you before you even touch your gun. He'll kill you. You haven't got a chance. You believe him, boy? I am, Mr. Yates. Then you get up on that horse. That's an order. It's one order I can't take, Mr. Yates. If it means anything to be my own man, I gotta go through with this. new out here. I'm not sure the right way of doing things, but where I come from, if you want to fight a man, you set a time and a place. You want to fight a duel, Mr. Bedford? Yes, sir. Well, last time, Rome. Let's get out of here. Ooh. What's the hurry? Maybe I've got something to say. Stop this, Woodrow. I think you will have to admit that Dell is not the aggressor here. Mr. Bedford has taken away my right to interfere, and I think he's taken away yours, too. This is between the two of them. Go ahead, Dell. You have a right to speak. Well, I was about to say, why wait? Let's make this the place and now the time. No. Let's do this properly, like Southern gentlemen. A duel is supposed to be fought at dawn. Tomorrow? The day after. That'll give the young man a chance to decide. Perhaps he's uh, made a mistake. There's been no mistake. Dawn will be satisfactory. Dell? Sure, sure. Whatever way you want it, Mr. Woodruff. Father, why? How's that? Oh, you shoot as good as any man I've ever seen. But not good enough. It was dead center. But the target wasn't shooting back. You'd have been down three seconds before you fired. Kid, you're ready for lesson number two. Let me have that gun. What was that for? That's lesson number two. This gun is your life, kid. 
Never give it to anyone, not even your mother. Thanks. I'll remember that. Now I'm ready for lesson number three. How's he doing? Oh, he shoots straight enough, but he, he's slow, Rowdy. Lingman will empty his gun before a room gets a shot You're going to have to put a stop to it. Hey, you mind telling me how? Draw! You're weak on the draw, kid. We're going to have to work on that. I want to stop this as much as the rest of you, but uh, there's only one man who can do that. Lingman. No, the man who gives Lingman his orders. I think we better show him the play we use in Wichita. Yeah, he might need it. Now. Now. You got a chance, kid. If you hadn't started with that boy, none of this would have ever happened. The cattle would have been off, and I would never have known this boy existed. But he still would have known about you. What does that mean? Doesn't mean anything. But if you want that boy dead, that's the way you're going to have him. I never said that. Well, I guess you never did say it. Come in. Mr. Yates wants to see you, Father. All right, Dale. Would you uh, leave us now, Vicky, please? I'd like to know how soon we're going to get moving. Not before tomorrow, Mr. Yates. Well, I'd like to move out right away. Why the rush? You know why the rush. I don't want that boy killed. His duel was the boy's own idea, Mr. Yates. Nobody forced him into it. You and I know a different, Mr. Woodruff. What would you like me to do? Send Lingman away for a few days. By the time he gets back, we'll be gone. As easy as that. That's right. He'll take orders from you. It won't ruin his reputation to spare a boy's life. No, Mr. Yates. I'm not going to interfere. And I don't think you should either. That's your last word, huh? That's my last word. outside the door. This is an affair between men, my dear. I suggest you stay out of it. Mr. Yates was right. All you had to do is send Dell away. Are you quite sure he'd go? Make him. And if he doesn't go, dismiss him. You're asking me to let this ranch fall completely apart. Let it fall apart. Sell it. Anything. It is not worth that boy's life. What is he, this boy that you're so concerned about? A young, arrogant hellion? Dell was right. He needs a lesson. Dell will kill him. The whole thing was the boy's own idea. Father, I don't understand. This isn't like you at all. You let it go at that. No, that is not good enough. I'm not a stranger. I'm your daughter. I need to know why. You need to do what you're told to do. Now you go to your room and stay there. Father! Go to your room! <laughs>
Is it Becky? I want you to stop this duel. Oh, I don't think your father would like that. Why? Do you know something I don't? Because if you do, I wish you'd tell me. I'm only a ranch foreman, Miss Vicky. Yes, but you can stop this duel. There's only one thing make me give up killing that kid. What? You. Never. Well, I hope you've made your goodbyes. Because that's the last time you're going to see that kid alive. Everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. What's that? Poetry? It's a good book. Ecclesiastes. That's what we need around here. A little more truth. Has the kid told any of you there's something personal between him and Woodruff? He ain't told me nothing. Wish. Don't look at me. I wouldn't know anything. Well, Rowdy, maybe we better find out. Well? between you and Woodruff, I want to know. Look, maybe I can save you some time. Anything I know about Woodruff has nothing to do with this. My fight's with Lingman. Whatever Woodruff does or doesn't do, I'd find Lingman and I'd fight him. He's got to test himself. Yeah, it comes down to that. He'll either go a few inches or he'll be dead. something coming between us. We mustn't let that happen. You and I, we must always... Yes, Father. It means what you think it means. Where are you going? Why? Somewhere. Anywhere. But to leave the house in the middle of the night, to go away without... Oh, that boy. No, Father, not Roman. Lehman. How long has this been going on? Is that what you really think of me? He's out there, isn't he, waiting for you? Yes, he is. Why, Vicky? Why? I couldn't see you become a murderer. Yes, that's what it would have been, dealt against that boy. Oh, my God. That's... That's why you're going away with Lehman. Why didn't you stop that duel, Father? I couldn't. Why? It's for you. For me? 
Mickey, because of that boy, we could lose everything. Home, freedom, everything. I don't understand. Mickey. There never was an estate back in Savannah. At least not mine. I was a clerk on another man's plantation. He sent me to school, gave me a position. And after the war, the carpetbaggers descended on us. There was confusion, disorder. Everything was toppling. I helped to destroy the man I worked with. I took everything I could get, and I came west. That was why my picture was in the paper. A picture of a... a traitor and a thief. Vicky, I swear... Hold oh, up, Father! Your honor is a southern gentleman. I guess I deserve that. Why did you lie to me all these years? I think that's what I hated most. I'm not asking you to forgive me. I am asking you to try to understand. You don't know what it was like in those days. The world crumbling around us. I, I had you to think about. Father, I never needed this. I suppose I knew that too. The rock bottom lie was I needed it for myself. Is that why you didn't stop this too? You must stop it now. Do you realize if that story comes out, everything I've built up for you will lose it? Everything? Doesn't matter. I don't want it if it means the death of that boy. Then I don't either. Not at all. Stay inside, please. You won't need that extra horse. Just like that, huh? In the morning, you draw your back pay and get out. All these years doing your dirty work, and now I'm just another hand. Much worse than that. You owe me something, Woodruff. Mr. Woodruff. Never mind all that. I know what you are. All right. Then maybe you ought to know it's all over. We're not going to do anything to that boy. That's not the way I see it. No? I got a share in all this, Woodruff. About a one-half share. And I still intend to be part of the family. Damn it! be all right. I want to settle with that kid. Whatever he knows is too much. And if anybody's going to put you in jail, it'll be me. And I'll be back for you. Kid. I saw your empty bedroll. I'm all right. I just couldn't sleep. You still want to go through with this? No. Nothing I can say will make you change your mind. No, Jed. Nothing. Hey, kid. 
Remember what I said. You've got a chance. Don't either one of you make a move. Don't do it, Colby. It's not you that I'm after. He isn't wearing a gun. Give him yours. Lingman? Give it to him. Other hand, Colby. Thanks, Mr. Yates. Well, what are you going to do now? Father's going back to face Savannah, and I'm going with him. Oh, I think you'll find it a forgiven town. Maybe you'll go there someday, too. I hope so. Rome, you ready? Ready. Trail drive would be an exciting life full of adventures. Well, maybe it will be when I'm a real drover. But right now, I don't seem to be too important. All my adventures are peeling potatoes and carrying water, washing pots and pans, and itching Mr. Wishbone's back when it scratches. Well, I'm the cook's last for Mr. Favor's trail drive. Men call me Mushy because, well, I guess maybe because it's my name. Mushy! Mushy! Just once. Just once what? Well, just once. I wish I'd get a letter, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, what would you do with a letter? Mr. Favor? Make not much of a meal. Favor? Mr. Favor? Scarlet? Hey. Hey, Scarlet? Shock. Ah. Wait a minute, will you? What are you Notice doing? You opened yours. I'll get you one. About time. Mr. H. Mushgrove the third. Today a trail? Mushgrove? That must be Mushy. Hey, Mushy, you got a letter. Come on, don't you want it? Like Mr. Wishbone says, I'm mighty well told I want it, Mr. Rowdy. Thank you. Now, how about that? 
I waited in town two days to get this mail, and Mushy's the only one who bothered to thank me. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of, boy. Lots of people can't read. Oh, did you read it for me, Miss Wishmore? Dear Harkness. Harkness Mushgrove? After all these months, I finally found out what you were doing. I suppose it is normal for boys to run away from their family at least once in their lives, but what kind of a boy is it who joins a cattle drive? Uh, at any rate, I love you and forgive you, and I am taking a stage to Owens Mills so that when you reach there, I will be ready to take you away from all of those nasty cows and bring you home, love mother. Uh, I ain't through yet. P.S. If I don't find you at Owens Mills, I'll keep right on until I catch up with you. What's a P.S., Mr. Wishbone? Oh, well, it's uh, something you got to mind, like your P's and Q's. P's and Q's? Uh, what do I do with them now? Well, you got nothing to worry about. We was at Owens Mills a month ago, and your mother wasn't there. Well, you heard my ma's P.S. She'll find me if she has to walk all the way. Well, I guess some boys just shouldn't leave their mamas, Mushy. Or some mamas shouldn't leave their boys. All right. You've got other things to do. All of you. If you've finished eating, get out and relieve the noon hawks. Would you give me a chance to prove I can handle the steers, Mr. Favor? How many times have you asked that, Mushy? This time means a lot, Mr. Favor. Your mother? Yes, sir. You want to work full time at driving cattle, huh? You won't regret it, Mr. Favor. I think. You really sure? Yes, sir. And I'll see if Wishbone can do without you for a little while. Wishbone? Yeah. You think you could do without Mushy for a while? Mr. Favor, do you think I could do without a wart on the end of my nose? Why? Well, he wants to try his hand at driving cattle. Get himself killed. If that's what he wants, I can work him to death. Then you'd have to do without him anyway, wouldn't you? All right, go on and get yourself killed. I can get more done without you. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. But somebody's got to help me with them dishes. The men will all take turns. All right. Hey, Mushy, is Mommy's boy planning on riding out to see his mommy? Scarlet? Yeah, boss. Mushy's going to try his hand at drove. And you're the one that's going to stay with him till he gets the hang of it and see that he doesn't get hurt. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm dying to see if what hatched Mushy is really human. You think maybe Mushy's ma has two heads, I wish? <laughs> Probably has. Must have scared old Mushy Plum Sapodillo when he was a baby. I can see her now. Come riding into camp, shooting old Mushy out with a shotgun. Yeah, you mean an apron string, <laughs> don't you? I bet she weighs 200 pounds isn't as old as Methuselah. Should be in Clarington tonight. Oh, I can hardly wait to see my boy. It's been a long time. I wonder if he'll recognize me. Now, Grandma, you know, you've always looked 75 years old. I hope he got my letter, or he wouldn't know I'm coming. Such a wonderful boy. I wish he hadn't left home. We used to have such wonderful times together. Playing tiddlywinks? You've been awfully quiet, Mrs. Musgrove. Have I? No, that's just because you ain't given nobody else a chance to talk, Grandma. The lady's name is Mrs. Laker, young man. And I suggest you show her the proper respect. Or else. Or else what? I personally shall slap your face. You? <laughs> Would you like another or else? I was only joking. Miss Laker, she knows I was only joking, don't you, ma'am? I bet your son would beat the daylights out of him, too, wouldn't he? I doubt it. 
Better not try it. If he'd slap my face, he'd be a dead man. Just be another notch on my gun. All it takes to make a notch on a gun is a sharp knife. 18 men and 18 boot heels that can testify to my notches. We'll ask them. <laughs> Have your precious ladies. Get up. Come on, get up. Give me yours. like gold. That's my son's picture. I forbid you to touch it. Why, you... You take your hands off me. Mrs. Mushgrove had him stalled. Handled herself mighty brave. Did everything but bite one of them. Might not have been too smart. How far are you going, Mrs. Mushgrove? Well, I'm trying to catch up with my son, who's on a cattle drive somewhere around here. Your son on a cattle drive? Yes, I missed him at Owen Mills, but I thought maybe if I got to Clarington, I could look for him from there. On the hill back there, I saw a lot of dust up ahead. Could have been your son's cattle drive. Good. Then I can get to him from here. Now, there must be a ranch house or a farm somewhere near here. Would you please take me there so that I can rent a buggy? Uh, well, well, I have them out, and the stage company has their rules. And what's its rule about protecting passengers in holdups? The, the sheriff will need you to help identify the men. You mean the sheriff won't take your word for it if he ever catches them? Now, do you take me, or do I walk? All right. We'll take you. Good for you. Go ahead. I'll follow.
we stopping here for? We got to find that woman. What for? If she identifies you, the law is going to find us. You going to kill her? Unless you want to marry her. Me, a fool. Maybe we just ought to kill you. That way we won't have to worry about you being recognized. Try crown. We're going to Clarendon to pick up that woman. You're getting it, Mushy. Thanks to you, Mr. Scarlet. How's it going, Mushy? Just fine, Mr. Favor. Good. We'll make night camp here. You better come on in. I'd like to stay a while longer. The more practice I get for my mock, huh? The better I'll look in front of her. Boss, I think he's ready to try it along. Well, let's find out. Don't forget what I learned you. I'll help you out. I'll get your head. <laughs> well, what happened after that? Well, then he got up in the saddle and looked around, just like he's a trail boss. Hollers, head him up, move him out. <laughs> just who is in charge here? Your favor, ma'am. Mr. Favor. Do you really think it wise to send a boy to do a man's work? Apparently not. You realize my son might have been killed? You mean you're his mother, ma'am? Yes, sir, I am. Were you really so short-handed? Please, Mr. Favor, tell her how mean those stairs can be. Yeah, it could have happened to any of us, ma'am. Wishbone? What's the matter with my coke's locks? He was unsaddled trying to turn a steer. I succeeded in stopping his horse. Your cook's what? Oh, just a trail term, ma'am. Quince, get me some blankets and hot water. Come on out of there. Now, what's the matter with you? I'm uh, dizzy. As if I didn't know. Come on, get it in here. Now, lie down here and let me take a look. Well, you're just going to have to wait supper. This is going to take quite a lot of doctoring. Is it serious? Well, no, on second look, it's most of the doctoring is just going to be scrubbing. Uh, brain scrubbing, that is. Well, I'll be very happy to start the dinner. Lady, you know what you're getting into? I think so. And I'm sure all of these men are as hungry as my boy is. All right, we're having stew. Makings are over there at the chuck wagon. Very well, I'll get right to it. Am I going to be all right, Mr. Wishbone? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I don't even know if I can stretch out this treatment till you've all finished the supper. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll 
I'll take that for you. Well, Harkness, how do you feel now? Oh, fine. It, it was my head. Nothing to worry about. Good. Then we can travel tomorrow. But, Ma, I meant it. I don't want to go home. Well, we won't have any arguments about it. You're just not ready for a life like this. That sure was good stew, Miss Musgrove. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nolan. I call it ragu. Ragu? Uh, no wonder it's so good with a fancy name like that. <laughs> what about it, Washburn? It is delicious, Miss Mushgrove. Oh, well, there's nothing to fixing one meal, goodness. But I could never cook for all these men every day the way you do. Uh, Miss Mushgrove, I've been meaning to ask you about your son Harkness. Now, it ain't any of my business, but he kind of takes to this life, and I think it'd be better if you'd leave Mushy with us. Mushy? Oh, uh, kind of a trail term, ma'am. Uh, but it is part of his name, kind of squeezed down a bit. Well... As a widow, I have to decide things for myself. And I think I know what's best for my boy. Maybe if he wants to, he can try this again when he's grown up. Well, now, I've been meaning to tell you about that, too. Now, Mushy takes an awful lot of ribbon around here without any complaining. Now, that's a sign of being grown up. Yeah, Ma, I'm signed up to finish the whole drive. If I hadn't come along this afternoon, you'd be dead, signed up or no signed up. You're going home. Thanks, Mr. Wishbone, for trying. Mr. Quince, can I have one of your cigars? Huh? Oh, sure, Mushy. Here, here, let me light it. like a good cigar after dinner. Harkness, when did you take up smoking? Well, drawers are great ones for playing jokes on each other. Probably sneak some loco weed in there. Which one of you? Well, it's me. Why, you... It's lucky for you my ma's around. I don't want to bloody your nose in front of her. Nothing wrong with this. It's real Virginia tobacco. It's much too strong for you. Pack up your things, Harkness. We're leaving. In the dead of night? That's right, Mrs. Musgrove. There's certainly no time to be starting out on a journey. We could make you real comfortable in the supply wagon, ma'am. Well, that's very neighborly of both of you. Very well. We can start at dawn. And I'll go first to the farm where I rented the buggy, and then the stagecoach stop can't be far from there. Uh, well, then I'll get your blanket. I'm very kind. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm afraid we're going to be needing a new cook's loves. But it ain't any of you wants a job, right? Like Wishbone says, you're mighty well told we don't. You see, Mr. Faber, ain't everybody can put up with Mr. Wishbone. You're mighty well told. Uh, please don't let her take me. What can I do? I don't know. Please don't let her take me. Well, I ain't never been happier than I've been on this trail drive. Well, the more I'm cussed at and the more I'm laughed at, the more I feel like I belong. I wish there was something we could do. Maybe there is. Maybe if something could happen to her, I could save her. What do you want us to do? Fight your mom, Mushy? Oh, no. I don't want any of you to get hurt. Uh, but if somebody she didn't know could take her away, I could save her. And she'd be so thankful, she'd let me do anything I want. What do you mean? Uh, take her away against her will? It might work. Yeah, I'm afraid I couldn't go along with anything that might be jeopardizing Mrs. Mushgrove. Don't worry about that, Mr. Fair. You should have seen the way she saved me this afternoon. Oh, don't remind me about that. Well, she, I think you ought to be with your mother. You ain't got to stop thinking about it.
Hey, I think I got an idea. Suppose we hired a couple of fellows and have one of them play like he's a sheriff. Then take her in for questioning. Questioning for what? They say this fellow where she got the buggy, that he's accused of renting stolen property, and she's got to go in and identify him. Or maybe they'd think that she was working with him, see? Yeah, and, then, and they wouldn't have to scare her any and, until Mushy got there. Then they'd pull off their badges and say they're holding up for ransom. Maybe for uh, Mr. Favor's trail money. Yeah. And that, that's, that'll be when Mushy comes in, huh? How about that? Look, we ride old Mushy all the time, and he's willing to do anything he can for us. We ought to help him. I think it'll work, and you make sure that Mrs. Musgrove don't get hurt. Go ahead. Well, don't expect her to change her mind after coming 600 miles to get him. Well, she might. I'll go back there where we watered the bees and hire a couple of men. Just make sure that they don't come in when everybody's sleeping. Oh, well, I'll have them come in about daybreak when which one's cooking coffee. I'm sorry that you don't seem very glad to see me. Especially since I traveled over half the country to try and find you. Uh, what? You don't, you don't see Mr. Favor's mother tracking halfway across the country to hold his hand? Saying, come on home, sonny. Well, now, Harkness, Mr. Favor's a grown man. No, the time will come when you will thank me for this. Really, you will. You'll realize it is for your own good. Good night, son. You go to bed, too, now. It's been quite a day for both of us, hasn't it? Talk to all you folks. Thanks, Mr. Laker. I'll get the sheriff right away. Give them five dollars a piece. They're coming to take your mother away. They'll be here in about an hour. When I do, well, they'll take her to that old, uh, old mining shaft up in the hills there, a couple of miles. Now, there's a bunch of old mines up there, but you can't miss this. It's marked the Zentner Mining Company. I made the sketch so you won't miss it. Zentner. Did you get big fellas sort of look like? They're big enough. You got to be convincing. Oh, I'll be convincing, Mister. After they leave, you give them about 15 minutes, and then you follow them. They're going to tell her that they're not lawmen just before you get there. what I say? Well, it don't matter what you say. Just be strong. Just bust in there and say, let go, my mom. I told the smallest fella to jump you and give you a fight. He'll struggle for a while, and he'll let you win. Well, what about the other one? Well, he's just going to stand by and keep an eye on your mother so she doesn't run away. I'd not fight him, too. Well, let's don't overdo it. After you knock the first one out, you pick up your gun and aim it at the other fellow, and he'll like surprise and drop his gun. Gosh, Mr. Nolan, I sure appreciate this. Well, it's all right, Mushy. Go just get some rest and be ready to mix it with him in the morning, huh? Get 
on, kid. You ain't at the herd yet. Well, we can find 3,000 head of cattle by ourselves. Get out. That's what you brought me along for. No, we brought you along to get you out of Clarington. Mister, you got me wrong. I'm on your side. I'd like to throw in with a bunch like you. You would. Please, mister, you got me wrong. I'd like to be one of you guys. I ain't never gonna tell. That's right. I done everything you asked me to do. What can a man do for you and live? Not be in the wrong place at the wrong time, kid. That kid was right. There she is. Only one old man with her. We could take her easy. There's one old man and some 20 drovers. Yeah. Won't do us any good to rush in there, huh? They're 20 drovers now. They're gonna get up in a little while. They're gonna eat their breakfast, and they're going out to take their spots around the herd. Then it'll just be her and the cook, and we, uh... Yeah, that's right. Now, how did you figure that out? What you don't understand is that Harkness is... Well, he's different. Oh, he's a good boy. I don't mean that. But he is slower than most. I know many who are full-grown at 17 or 18. With Harkness, it'll take until he's 30, likely. <laughs> Would well, this be Martha Mushgrove? Why? Well, we have to take her to identify a man accused of renting out stolen goods. You, Mrs. Mushgrove? I am. You uh, rented a buggy recently, didn't you? I did. Well, I was stolen. Come with us, Mrs. Mushgrove. Here, now, Sheriff. Well, I know you got a job to do, but let's be a little more friendly about it. Mrs. Mushgrove isn't any criminal. Thank you very much, Mr. Wishbone. I feel certain you won't let them take me. Oh, well, there isn't very much I can do about it, ma'am. He's the law. Come on, Miss Mushgrove. This ain't gonna take long. Let's go. Now, you treat her gentle and bring her right back soon. Hey, great job, Wish. I think it worked. Good play acting. I don't know. I'm still not liking this. Well, ain't nothing gonna happen to her. It's all set, ain't it? To go rescue my mother? Now, wait a minute, Mushy. You gotta wait till I get your mob to mine. No, Roddy, I think by the time he gets a horse saddle, uh, it'll be time for him to go. Well, thank you, Mr. Nolan. Thank you. Thank you. You! You think three of you are enough for one woman this time? Shut up. Let's go. All right for me to go now? You won't be needing your apron, Mushy. Oh. Well, first mine on the south, up in the hills. That's right. Now, you remember everything I told you? Yeah, first mine on the south. Uh, is that your mining company? That's right. Good luck, Marcy. Go get them. Here I go. All
Martha Mushgrove. What for? I wanted to look at some wanted posters. Didn't she tell you she was on a stage that got held up? No. Nope. She saw the face of one of the men who did it. Where is she? Well, she'll be back in a little while. And you may as well have some coffee while you wait. inside. Can you get off that by yourself? My dear sir, I rode horses before I was old enough to ride. against one unarmed woman? You planning to send for reinforcements? Who are those men? Men who sooner or later will catch up with you. Lawmen. They both wore badges, that's true. What they want? That's none of your business. Or maybe it is. Taking quite a time for Mrs. Mushgrove to show up, ain't it? I hope she's safe. What do you mean, safe? Well, it could be. I ain't the only one looking for her. They might want to grab her first and silence her. Who's they? Uh, aren't those the men you hired to help Mushy? Yeah, it is. Where is she? What does it look like? Here, help me with Sam. A gun butt cracked him on the skull so hard he can hardly see. All we were supposed to do was put up a token fight against one boy. Nobody said putting up a fight against three men. What three men? The three that jumped us right after we left here. What they look like? Wore masks. From my head cleared, they was gone and she was gone. Looks like the men you were after, Sheriff, already got to Mrs. Mushgrove. Rowdy, take over. <laughs> She was supposed to go. No sign of his horse around. Could have been driven off.
Well, she's been in there, all right. There's no mistaking about his footprints. All right, we'll spread out and comb these hills. Quince, you try that one. <laughs> to bury me alive? If you had a trace of mercy in you, you'd shoot me first and let me die like a man. Well, I'd never shoot a woman. That's noble of you. Extremely noble. Let go of my mouth. Throw down your guns. Don't try that. Darkness, I'm just fine. Look out! Somebody tell me who, what, and why. They held up the stagecoach. And they're after me because I saw his face. They aren't. You aren't. Mr. Mr. Nolan, he, he didn't promise you five dollars. They held up the stagecoach. Drag him in the back. Bury his mother in them 
myself. Forget my money. We ain't got nothing to lose. All right, kid. I'm coming out with you, mother. Good for you, Harkness. Give them a taste of their own medicine. I can't. I can't hold it much longer. Throw down your guns. Hold on, kid. Hold it, go. Pick up the guns, Ma. Show them gentlemen out fast. You heard what my son said. Now you move. Oh. Gentlemen, I... This is Musgrove. Uh, sure, Mushy proved himself to be a pretty good man. Well, even the sheriff said so when he took those men back to jail. He said it'd take quite a man to handle those three. That's right, Mrs. Musgrove. All the men are awfully proud of the way your son's handled himself. Look, you gotta let him stay, Mrs. Musgrove. I, I couldn't take this job more than one day. No offense, Mushy. You wouldn't want him to break his word. Now, he signed on in San Antonio to finish the drive in Sedalia. Well, you're all quite right. It's been a lovely visit, Harkness. Do you mean I can stay? I've been trying to tell you that all morning, but honestly, you men talk more than women do. When are you leaving, huh? In just a few minutes. The sheriff told me that I could get the stagecoach right in front of the farm where I rented the buggy. Harkness. You've all been so kind to me, really. I enjoyed myself very much. Oh, really? It was our pleasure, ma'am. And when you come home, you bring Mr. Wishbone for a visit. Oh, I'd be charmed, ma'am. Of course, you're all invited, you know, any time at all, really. I'd love to. Thank you. We'll do that, thanks. Well, I'll just uh, go get my bonnet and my parasol. We'll help you. Well, it looks like I'm stuck with you. Ain't that just fine, Mr. Wishbone? <laughs> to get anything in there. What, you afraid of a little brush? I'm not afraid of brush. It's just that I've had enough to last me a lifetime in the last three weeks. Besides, I'm tired of getting cut up on these thorns. Oh, now, that is too bad. Yeah, well, maybe it isn't worth it. We're getting a hurt for nothing. Do you know how much these critters are getting at the gathering ground? Look, boss, I know you're trying to do something good for us, but, uh, you know, we're a whore out. Ain't we got enough cattle already? Yep. We've got more than a thousand head. And don't forget, we got 800 more head we got to pick up at San Antonio. And we can handle more than 3,000, so we keep working. Pete, you take over here. Where are you going? See the men on the other side of the creek. 
Let's see what's in it. Passing. You want to live in this place? That's no business of yours. Just keep on moving. Not till I get that steer. It ain't yours. I didn't see any brand on it. I got as much right to it as anyone. You'd be a long day getting it the way you was going at it. I suppose you could do better. Well, I'd be dead long ago if I couldn't. Well, there he is, boy. Go get him. <laughs> Back camp. I'll be all right as soon as I get that critter. Here comes the boss. We better get going. Howdy. These gentle ones? You're looking at them? I sure could use some gentle ones to help me with the wild ones. I ain't in the cattle business. Well, I'd pay a good price. I said they ain't for sale. Oh, say, I uh, come across the ruins of a wagon train up there. You know anything about it? Hey, you can see for yourself. Indians got them. Comanches coming through in a raid. All wiped out? Hey, you saw it. You think anybody would walk away from a thing like that? Well, if it's privacy you want. Are you the boss of this outfit? Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, and you, you trying to get yourself a herd for picking up these... Uh, these brush cattle here one at a time. You know any other way? Well, now, if you knew what you could do, you could pick up maybe three, four hundred head at once in a bunch with no trouble at all. Well, if I knew what I was doing, what would I be doing? Well, spotting the lead steers. Lead steers? Out here? Yeah, they got their own herds. They gather on the water holes. No trouble is that. I, I haven't seen many water holes. You ain't seen many steers either. Well, you pick up three, four bunches like that, you'd have your herd. No time at all without this brush popping. You're the only one who knows how to do that. You want a job? Job? Riding with you? Hmm. Find us the beef. I pay you. Two bits a head. Find us around 400. You could pick yourself up an easy hundred dollars. Yeah, as I said, I ain't in the cattle business. You got anything better to do? Look, we'll, we'll take the gentle ones off your hands, too. Between the two, you could pick up a nice steak. Maybe enough to get out of this brush. My name's Jed. 
Ed? The other name don't matter. Fair enough. My name's Favor. You ready to go? No, no. I'll meet you here around sundown. Give me enough men to handle the cattle. And bring back every man you can spare. We'll eat fast and head back out. You ain't serious about following that crazy old coot, are you? That crazy old coot can show us stuff in that bush we'd never believe was there. Oh, I don't know. There's something strange about him. Sure, he's probably ducking some sheriff from somewhere. That's none of our business. All we want him to do is show us where we can pick up some beef. I think he can do it. I don't know. Look, you was the one complaining about getting the job done fast. This is your big chance. <laughs> Riders from all the ranches and a sheriff. You, Mr. Favor? That's right. I'm Sheriff Blaine. You the boss of this outfit? What can I do for you? Well, these are reps from some of the ranches around here, Mr. Favor. The boys want to know what you're doing out here. It's fairly obvious. We're gathering a herd of mavericks. Mavericks, huh? Well, now, it seems to me you've got quite a few head of branded cattle in that bunch out there. Well, naturally. Pick up everything we find, like anybody else would. Naturally, we're going to cut out the brands and turn them over to the reps here when they show their credentials for them. Of course, I'll expect the usual payment for bringing in strays, dollar a head, or the equivalent in beef, one out of every five head. My choice. Is that satisfactory to you? That's only five dollars a head. Going right this year. A lot of those mavericks are our cattle, too, you know. Look, I can't help it if you're too lazy or too soft to go into that brush and get them out. We did it. We worked hard for those scrubs, and I'm not about to give up one head of them. Now, Mr. Favor, nobody wants to take anything away that you rightfully come by. It's just, well, the boys figure you got enough by now. Well, it's just a matter of figuring, then. And I don't figure it that way. So we'll stay until we're ready to leave. Unless you got a legal reason. No. No, I can't say as I have. All right, then we'll be staying for a bit. Oh, you gentlemen are welcome to stay and watch. I haven't got time to cut them right now. You can go ahead if you want to. Of course, I'll have to leave a few of my men to watch you. There was no offense meant, Mr. Favor. And none taken. It's just that, well, you're not too well known around here. Well, I guess I will be now. Yeah? Yeah, I guess you will be. Say, you want some coffee? No, oh, thanks. I think I'll be riding back into town. You think they'll be looking for trouble after you leave? Not unless you started, Mr. Favor. Those are all good, honest men. Hard-working hands for reputable ranchers around here. I can cross something. Mean anything to you? A fever and cars. No. Can't say it's a dud. Found it out there in brush. Ruins of a wagon train. Five, six wagons. You found that? Well, now, we've been looking on and off for that for, oh, past two years. Where was it? Oh, about two, three miles out that way, over the other side of the ridge. Uh, what's it look like now? Oh, nothing much left of it. It's all burnt. Oh, there's one thing, though. There's 12 graves around there. 12 graves, huh? Well, he buried them. That's something nice, Raven. What's the story? Oh, just about what you saw. Small wagon train heading through here on its way to Mexico. Unlucky enough to run into a big raiding party at Comanche. There's only one survivor, a man named Hadley. He was a wagon master himself. How come you never found it then? Well, this Hadley fellow just up and disappeared before anybody had a chance to find out where the wagons were. Nobody's seen hiding a hair of him since. Something mighty strange about it. I'd like to take a look at it if I can find the time. I think you can show me where it is. I can uh, point you in the right direction when you're ready to go. Ah, that's fair enough. I'll see you, Mr. Favor. Well, come on, let's get eaten and get back out there. I don't know, I got a feeling in my bones. We're gonna have trouble with those Jaspers. Maybe. Maybe we'll be out of here before it has a chance to start. That is, if you ever get some food, so we can get back to work.
Who do you suppose that is? Probably more ranch reps. Ah, uh, Wishbone can take care of them. We got more important things to do. Boss of this outfit. Right now, I'm the boss, friend, whiskers and all. No offense, man, Cookie. I'm, I'm on the way to a good set myself. Only on you, they don't look so good. Well, you're a regular fighting cock, ain't you? Only underneath that rough exterior beats a heart of gold, huh? Is there any chance of weary travelers camping next to you, neighborly like? Right now, we practically got a whole convention. If you can find any room, I can't stop you. Well, I've had heartier welcomes, but we accept your hospitality. We? Oui. Is there any chance of buying some beef? We've been out in that wilderness for about a week. We were half starved for some fresh meat. Well, for you, I could maybe spare some for a price. Thank you kindly. Oh, yes. Thank you, young man. This here's Mrs. Lefevre. I do, ma'am. My, aren't we fortunate, Mr. Cars, to meet such a nice young man? Oh, indeed, indeed. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Of course, ma'am, I'd be honored if you'd be my guest for supper. You just come right on down and make yourself at home. Mushy, come over here and help. <laughs> but they're the right for it. Put a rope on those critters there, we camp here and wait. We'll see. All right. Let's see. My such delicious food, Mr. Wishbone. You are wonder way out here in this wilderness, too. It isn't anything, ma'am. Well, I may be so bold as to ask, ma'am. Uh, what brings you on a brush like this? I've come to find the grave of my only son. Oh, I'm sorry. Out here, ma'am? In the brush? Somewhere out here. We're not sure where. But we've been driving, hoping to find a clue. See, he was killed in a massacre of a wagon train about two years ago. But it's taken us this long to trace it to somewhere around here. Nobody can tell us where. We were hoping that maybe some of you gentlemen had heard something. No, ma'am, we haven't heard a thing. None of the men scouting around here come across any signs? Not that I know of. How do you know it's around here? I told us so in Dogtown. The only survivor coming there, the wagon master himself. Only that coward run out before he told him where it was. You're sure your boy was killed, ma'am? No one but... This Mr. Hadley escaped, that's certain. So you see, Mr. Wishbone, I simply had to come. We're not even sure there was a burial, that there is a grave. My boy may still be lying out there in the wilderness. There, there, ma'am. My, what a story. Yeah, it is, eh? Hey. What's this? I don't know. Let me see. The fever and cut. Well, that's your name, then. I thought you said nobody around here knew anything about a wagon train. Well, I've never heard anything. And where'd this come from? I don't know. I see Mr. Favor has something like that today. Favor? Well, he's our boss. Oh, Mr. Carson. Where is he? Mr. Favor? Well, he's out in the brush with the men tonight. Well, I'm sure he doesn't know anything about a wagon train. Don't he? Are you sure his name's Favor? You sure it ain't Hadley? Well, now that's ridiculous. Is it? Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. We'll see. But I'm gonna have me a little talk with this Mr. Favor. How many men do you think you'll need to hold them to take them into 
to the gathering ground tomorrow. I don't know. It's some wild stuff, isn't it? You drive the lead steers on out ahead, the rest will follow. It's the easiest drive in a trail broke curve. Well, I guess you know what you're talking about. Yeah. What, about five men, maybe? All right, we'll leave them. Where are you going? On to another watering hole, see if we can get another bunch like this. Billy, Quince. Give me three, four more men. I got a couple of more watering holes. Look at. We can send some more men out to meet us in the morning. You get half again this many. I'll have my herd. I said you would, didn't I? You sure did. And you're not a cattleman, are you? A lot you know, don't you? You get a couple hundred tomorrow. You bring them on into camp for the counting. I'll give you your money. Miss Lefebvre. She's sleeping. Well, it's a pretty hard trip for an old lady. Now, you let me know when she gets up. And I'll make her a nice breakfast. Hey, uh, when this Mr. Favor be? I told you, not until he gets the cattle he wants and not before. I don't know when that'll be. How long you known him? Long enough to know his name isn't Hadley, it's Favor. You known him for two years? About that, anyway. You know what he done before he was a trail boss? He was nothing but a regular cow hand and a trail boss. He's known all over Texas, half of Kansas, and the nations beside. Ain't much difference between being a trail boss and a wagon master. Man could be either. But why would he, under another name? Uh, maybe he had a reason. You sound like you know of one. Maybe I do. Well, you're wrong about Mr. Favor. He don't know anything about it. Besides, he isn't the type to run from Comanches or anything else. Where'd he get that nameplate then? I don't know where he got it. He could have picked it up anywhere. Don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Well, let me tell you something, mister. If you're planning on taking out any revenge on him, you better be mighty well sure you got the right man, because you're asking for a lot of trouble. <laughs> Fever was my partner. He was killed in that wagon train massacre. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Thank you, sir. It was a tragic thing, of course. He was in the prime of life. Do you have anything else to say? What else should I have to say? Your name wouldn't by any chance be Hadley, would it? What are you driving at? Well, you seem to be the only one that knows where that wagon train is. You and the fellow that ran away from it, Hadley. That is, unless... Uh, you're one and the same man. Sure, I know where the wagon is. I came across it out there in the brush. The only reason I picked that up was to have something for somebody to identify. That's all you know about it? Except what I've heard since. Well, then you wouldn't mind showing us where it is. You see, Mr. Favor, it's her only son, and, well, she's come to see the grave and all. No, well, there are 12 graves out there, but there's nothing to identify which is which. Oh, then at least he is decently buried. Yes, sir. Uh, nothing fancy. You will take us there, Mr. Favor? What do you say, Favor? <laughs> sure, well, we'll go first thing in the morning. Or, of course, whenever you're ready, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Favor.
Oh, the poor soul. No way to tell which one. No, he, he didn't mark him. He? Well, I, I guess the wagon master Hadley must have been the one who done it. Well, then he couldn't have been wholly bad man. Well, he probably didn't think anybody had ever come out here looking or even fun. Doesn't matter. They died with my boy. They're all here together. I'll pray for them all. That's the way I like it. Maybe that way you realize you better just tell it all right away. For crying out loud, you still think I'm Hadley? It don't matter to me if you are or not. I just want to know, where is it? Where is it? What? Don't pull the innocent with me. The box that tag came off of. There wasn't no box. At least I didn't see none. It was lying loose on the ground. Anybody can see that was pulled off a metal box. Not by me. Maybe by the Indians or by this fella Hadley. You don't know anything about it? You can point that gun all day long. I'm not going to know any better. So upset, it must have been something pretty valuable in that box. I thought you didn't know. Well, it wasn't very hard to figure. Figures, uh, since you didn't want to say nothing about it, that uh, it must have been something stolen, huh? Are you just convincing me you know too much? I'm just guessing. Probably you were taking the loot to Mexico. Gonna meet later. Now, if he'd been running out on you, you put up a screen, but you didn't say nothing. All right, I'll do some guessing. That massacre was mighty handy for the only survivor, Hadley. Maybe he knew about the box and planned it this way. But if I'm not Hadley? Well, maybe you were just lucky. You stumbled in here, found the box, and then hid it somewhere. Oh, sure, and I'm hanging around sweating the hurt out of the brush. Maybe to cover up. From who? You're the only one who'd know about it. How would I expect you to show up? Oh, I'm guessing better than you are, Curse. Which wagon was Billy's? I told you, I don't know I'm not Hadley. You're bad guessing again. Well, I'll find it. Hey, unless the Comanche's got your box. That'd be a laugh. Look, you... Now, that's enough. If you use that thing, I'll put it away. You can look for your box all you want to. I can't help you. It was thoughtful of you, gentlemen, to allow me my moment alone. Thank you. You ready to leave now, ma'am? I thought before I'd never be ready, Mr. Faber. It seemed a terrible thing to go away and leave him here in the wilderness. But since I'd been here and seen it, it's easier somehow. Well, now, we can go back. Well, I, I thought I'd uh, stay around and look around a little while. Maybe I'd find something to Billy's. Oh, there was nothing of value, Mr. Cross. You know that. And somehow I don't think anything should be disturbed. Yeah. Besides, I, Mr. Favor here, we've kept him from his work long enough. You can come back later and look around uh, now that you've been here. Imagine you can find your way again. I'll manage. Whoa. It was a fine thing you did. You're welcome, ma'am. What's up this last bunch? We're holding our brands over across the creek. Take them out by night. Your man over there should have the tally shortly. Fine, I'll check with him then. Come back and talk to you about the trade. Mr. Faber, that last bunch that fellow Jed brought in is over 200. Looks like we got a herd. Good enough. Hey, did you find that wagon train? Yeah, we found it. Anything out there to show what happened? I think there's something fishy about it. Just like I think there's something fishy about that fella Hadley, too. I always thought that. Well, I'll tell you something else. I think there's something fishy about that fella Favor. I wouldn't trust him no further than I could throw him. Just why do you say that? I got my reasons. Boys, I wouldn't trust him the way you fellas would trust him, letting him pull out of here in the morning. Why? Well, he's got men all over out there. 
Who knows how many of your brandies got one? He might have whole herds hid out there in the brush just waiting for you to leave to pick them up. Thanks, huh? Doesn't as I heard. No reason we can't move out in the morning then. What about Brandon? Oh, they can wait for a couple days down the trail when we get away from this brush. What's the tally? The dead brought in 620. They're most all of them branded. Hey, hey you picked up yourself a nice piece of change for two days' work. Yeah. Uh, brings it up to 1900 head. About a little over. About 40 more to come from the trail. Well, we'll pick up some strays along the way. That 800 head down there at San Antonio. Well, have our 3,000. I don't crow yet. Let's get him away from this brush and out on the trail first. I don't like the looks of the sky. Favor. Yeah, we got a count for you. Well, never mind that now. We've been thinking. You better not pull out in the morning. Oh? Uh -huh. Why not? Oh, well, we think we better take a look around just to make sure. Well, in the name of heaven, do you think we're holding out on you? Look, you gentlemen. How much stock do you think we can handle with the men we got? Yeah, you got more of them up in the hills. You heard wrong. Who told you that? Never mind. Just don't try to move those cattle in the morning. Well, look, we'll, we'll move out whenever we want to. And we'll have to stop you. Better than something to top off your supper, ma'am. Why, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. You're very kind. <laughs> Isn't anything? Nothing at all. These men have all been so hospitable. Yeah. It sure is a nice old lady. Well, what's she doing way out here? Oh, that's a real sad story. Her boy was killed in that wagon train massacre. She went up there to see his grave today. Mr. Faber. Mr. Faber, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me my money so I could go on home. In the dark? The storm coming up? More than welcome to spend the night. Yeah, well, I'd rather not if you don't mind. There you go. Yeah. You know, sooner or later you're going to have to come out and face people, even if your name is Hadley. Where'd you ever get that idea? Oh, just a hunch. If you're common criminal hiding out, you wouldn't pick a place like you did to hide. You wouldn't stay there alone no two years, neither. No, you're not a criminal. Just hiding from people. Yourself. Besides, living so close to where it happened, it just figures your name's Hadley. Honest, Jed, you're going to have to come out of that brush sometime and keep from going brush crazy. I didn't ask your advice. Ordinarily, I wouldn't give it. But I've been mistaken for you, and my life's been threatened. That's your life. By who? That fella Cars, he thinks that uh, you're responsible for his partner being killed. Moreover, he thinks you stole something belonging to them. I didn't touch a thing. That money. Uh, that right, Jim? Well, I, I guess you know who I am. I suppose you always knew. I don't know how you knew, but you knew. Some difficult to figure. I've seen men eaten out by guilt before and trying to run away. Tell me, Jed, it's been two years now. Is it any better? Uh, well, I just wanted to warn you against caution. Better be careful, him. You're still welcome to spend the night, you know. If you don't, though, what do you say to eight double eagles? But that, that's, that's ten dollars too much. More than worth it. And thanks. You'd shake hands with me. I don't know what you did out there in the brush. You sure did us a good turn. Hi, Jed. Young man, you look lonesome. 
If you don't mind the company of an old lady, come sit down and visit a spell. Ma'am, I... I feel a little lonely myself tonight. And a little sad. God forgive me. I know I shouldn't be sad with my boy in the arms of the Lord. Sometimes a body can't help oh, missing. Oh, ma'am, I... Oh, my... Ma'am, please forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive you? Why? It was all my fault, ma'am. Your son might not be dead today if it weren't for me and my cowardice. What do you mean, young man? Who are you? My name's Hadley, ma'am. I was a wagon master who ran away. Do you want to talk to me about it? Might help. Uh, I, I... I never dreamed it could happen. I, I always thought I was brave. I never dreamed I was otherwise, but I, I'd never been tested. I'd never really been face to face with... with death. Until that day when we saw the Indians and... And then I knew, I, I knew what death looked like and I wasn't brave at all. Not many men are, Mr. Hadley. Oh, yeah, but they didn't act the way I acted. How did you act? I was a wagon master. I, I was responsible for them, but I, I, I ran to save my own life and I left them to do the same. I was on a horse and they were in wagons. They didn't have a chance. Maybe they didn't have any way with all those Indians. Maybe you're crucifying yourself no, unnecessarily. No, ma'am, no. I thought about it and thought about it and... You know, those Comanches were heading home from Mexico loaded with Mexican horses and gold. They weren't interested in us. I, 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 I knew even then that, that we, we might have a chance if we just squared up and we, and, and we fought them off two, three times. Uh, they could go away and leave us alone. It's not worth the trouble. Might have. Yeah, and some of us might have lived. And some of us, some of us might have died. And I knew that one of them might be me, and and, and I, I just turned and ran to save my own worthless, miserable life. And I, I ran even, and I could hear behind me what was happening. Oh. I see, I see. Ma'am, whatever you think of me, you got a right to think, because I already thought it. But I ain't had a minute's peace since then. I've just been thinking. It took courage for you to come back. And to bury them. And then to go into town and tell it. Ma'am. Could you have it in your heart? To forgive you. Oh, yes, Mr. Head. I've never known fear like that. But I don't think a person lives who can say and be sure of it, that they wouldn't have acted just as you did under the circumstances. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm a little tired. Yes, ma'am, I'll go. And Mr. Haddon, you will come back in the morning. I want to hear more about my boy. Yes, ma'am, I'll come back. And Mr. Hadley, peace will come. Perhaps you've already taken the first step. And if that's so, I'm glad the Lord has guided my footsteps here. Get off. Which 
one of those wagons was my partner driving. Well, I, I, I don't exactly know. They were heading every which way. Well, you buried him. Where'd you find him? Uh, well, I, I, uh, I think it was over there. Well, it better be. You're in trouble if it ain't. Back already? We're holding our beef down a ways. Just wanted to make sure you didn't try moving out before morning. Now you know that's exactly what's worrying me too. And you can help prevent it by getting out there and riding with my men, helping to hold this herd when the storm coming in. Are they getting restless? My greenhorns on an anthill. I want every one of you out in the saddle when you're through. Hey, Zeus, you too, Mushy. <laughs> what about me? You can still get in the saddle, climb in one. Where's Jed? It's a funny thing. I saw him and Cars going off that way in the wagon. Cars? They'll run it and take over. What do you think they're up to? Now, oh, where are you going? you think it is, yours? I don't know. Probably that old lady's. It's up to the law to say. It ain't up to nobody but me to say. It's mine. Him and me were partners. That was ours together. Well, then part of it belongs that old lady. Well, she don't need it. She ain't gonna live long. Let's say I need it more. I can't do that. <laughs> you? What do you got to do with it? I was master of these wagons. It's my duty to hold the belongings of any one of the deceased. And you're talking like that after what you've done? Why do you think I stayed here for two years? What are you gonna do, run back to town and tell them all about this, huh? Yes, I will. I ran once, but I won't do it again. Well, you mean that, don't you? Yeah, I'll turn the money in. You can have it if it's all yours, all legal. Well, in the first place, you fool, ain't nobody got a legal claim to it. It's stolen. Well, then we'll just have to give it back. Well, there's nobody to give it back to. The man's dead. He didn't have no family. Nobody in the world knows about this money but you and me. Looks like there's only one thing for me to do.
thee to thy maker. May he give thee everlasting rest. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. And for coming all this way out from the town. Thank you. It was a privilege to be of assistance, Mrs. Lefevre. Jed, what about the money? Well, I don't know. Krauss said the man he stole it from was dead and he had no family, so there's nobody to give it to. <laughs> Except her. Well, with that much money, she'd be sure to suspicion something. Yeah, that's right. Of course, unless I made up a story. Yeah. Well, now, Mr. Fabian, now, as master of that train, I consider it my responsibility. It means you'd have to tell her about it. Well, I already did. What about the others? Hmm. Well, I guess this time I did, didn't it? <laughs> Ms. Lefebvre? Yes, Mr. Hadley? Did you say Hadley? That's right, Sheriff. My name's Hadley. I'm the wagon master who ran away. I'll tell you all about that later. Got it, Mrs. Lefevre. Uh, before the attack, your son told me something. He, uh, he told me that he had a, a, a stroke, a good fortune. That he had, uh, uh discovered a, a, a gold mine and, and that he had sold it. My goodness, is that so? He never mentioned it to me. Yeah, well, I, 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 I guess he meant it as a surprise. But uh, anyway, Mr. Favor and I, we, uh, we found the money out there, and, and it, it, it's yours. It's mine. But, Mr. Hadley, I don't know what to say. Well, it'll have to be done all legal-like, you understand, but it, it, it's yours. Mm. The money's not so important, but I'd like to hear more about my boy. Would you ride back to town with us? <laughs> Why, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I'll just get, get the money and my horse, and I'll be right with you. Well, that's a surprise, isn't it? Oh, big surprise. Well, we're we ready to go? Yeah, already. We lost a few strays in that run last night, but I think we can pick some of them up on the way out. Yeah, you uh, fellas satisfied we ain't trying to rob you? Just don't come back next year looking for more beef. We'll be scarring that brush ourselves. Fair enough. I'll probably need a new crew anyway. I doubt if any of these thin-skinned loafers would get within a mile of that brush. Not unless you throw us in the hog toss. Now, I'll take the wide open spaces from now on. We better saddle up. Hey, wait a minute. Ain't you forgetting something? What? We're starting a new drive, and the Reverend's come all the way out here. Reverend, would you? Almighty Father, thou knowest these men who bow their heads before thee, hard-working, God-fearing men, who brave the dangers of a long and arduous trail to bring food to a hungry people. Guide them, protect the man and beast, and bring their venture to a safe and prosperous conclusion. Bless them, O Lord, in thy name. Amen. Venga. Oh, 
What do you think that is? Well, one thing's sure, Jesus, it ain't no alligator. You better go get the boss. See. Seem like anything's broke. He must have just bellied up. Well, some blankets and some of my stew will fix him. Ladies, girl, I'd give to Lizanne. Drag him over to the chuck wagon. Boss. Where I grew up, leg irons meant only one thing. Chain gang. See any striped suit? Ain't hard to get rid of a striped suit. Was any. By the time you get through talking about this man's past, he isn't going to have any future. Now he needs help, and now. Uh, well, I said to drag him over to the chuck wagon. Mushy, hot up the fire! Yes, sir. Say, so you want me to send a man up to Split Rock? It's a 60 mile ride. For what? Well, to bring back a sheriff. The way I see it. Law men and play guys used to go together. Can't you at least wait and hear what the man's got to say? Well, that might be trouble, though. So we got trouble. Roddy. Hmm? Let's just say that uh, I don't like chains. Not even when they're broken. All right? What's he doing? Well, fever's about broke. He'll be coming out of it any minute. Oh, fine. Hey, maybe now you can spare some time for mushy stew. Mushy fix stew? Well, I'm uh, guessing that's what it is. Hard to tell for sure. Oh, turn my back. That's all I gotta do. Just turn my back. What do you call that? A slum gullion, just like you make it, Mr. Wishbone. Just like I make it. Since when do I ever make stew out of bare bones and potato peelings? All the time. More smart remark out of you, and I'm gonna part your hair from the ankles up. Oh, it's wonderful having Wishbone back on the job again. Oh, yeah, it's so peaceful. That must be because his patient is... Boss? <laughs> Yes, 
stand clear. Hey, uh, let's drop that thing, huh? No, none of you. Come any closer. Nobody's gonna hurt you. There ain't an axe in the world that can beat a boat, mister. You better put that down. Yeah, I'll put it down. I'll pick it up and put it down all night for you. After you let go of them gun belts. All right. You know, uh... You think I'm a bluffing. You just keep on coming. Look, who you are and what you are, it ain't no never mind to us. That's your problem. It's a cattle drive, not a courthouse. You got two choices. Use that axe, you'll end up back in the river where you come from. Or you can drop it. Come on in and have something to eat. Well, might be. I mistook you for someone else. It might be I didn't. But, like you said, a man's a fool, a buck, a house tiger on an empty stomach. Mushy, spoon up some of the broth. Yes, sir. Mister? Jagger. B Boulevard Jagger. This is Wishbone, our cook. Roddy Yates, Ramrod, and I'm trail boss, Gil Favor. Cook, Ramrod, boss. <laughs> Even sounds like a cattle drive. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry about the axe. I guess I made a mistake. Couldn't hurt, Mr. Wishbone. <laughs> Only way to steam a fever from the bone out. You always travel with iron ballast? Only when I drag my foot, Mr. Ramrod, I forget what I am. What are you? I'm a walking, talking, traveling Tennessee sharecropper with a itch in my sitting pocket, a yard wide hole behind my belt, and a ten color rainbow between my ears. Uh, if you're up to it, uh, we'd appreciate some straight answers. I'll see if I can't find something more to fill that hole behind your belt. I like starting with the leg iron. <clears throat> leg iron ain't a beginning. It's an ending. Well, then, uh, why don't you start wherever you want? <laughs> wherever I want, Mr. Favor. Hmm. Might be. Should be the time. The land got so poor. Took two roosters to crow once. <laughs> I decided to put myself out of my misery. Scared my old pistol wouldn't work. So I got me a gallon of coal oil, a piece of rope, a bottle of rat poison. Rolled me out of the lake under the branch of a tree. Run the noose around my neck. Pour that oil all over myself. Ate the rat poison and set myself afire. Figuring to shoot myself just as I kicked the boat out from under my feet. Well, that fool pistol shot the rope in two. I fell in the river, put the fire out, got the choking and throwed up the poison. <laughs> 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 Well, after that, I figured my luck had to turn the other way. So I just picked up one foot and put the other one down behind it, and that's where it started. Poor, ignorant, little old dirt digger from Tennessee trying to put a set of traces on sundown. Well, dreams like that bust slow. Mine didn't come apart till I... Try to talk my way past a six-bit bill in a saloon back down the line of ways. Argument started. Finished in front of a sheriff. The man said, six dollars is 60 days. And me, six great big bits in the hole already. <laughs> work it off on the bond, they said. Ranch work, 60 days, and then you can keep on traveling. Well, since anything's better than... Four walls, nine bars. I made my mark and took the ranch. 
Sixty days I put in. And then I allowed us how I'd start traveling again. But this here rancher, he sees it different. Figured I owed him more time. And to make sure he got it, I got this. <laughs> but it wasn't strong enough to hold this traveling man. I busted that chain and started to run. Didn't stop till I hit that river. That's when you woke up with an accident. There's a thing about being your own man, Mr. Amrod. Like the feel of a swamp still tangle leg when it first hits your middle. A belly full of fireflies. Come slow to me being born with another man's color around my neck. Get my weaning on black snake whips and back busting work from can to can. Can to can? Work from the time you can see in the morning till you can't see no more in the night. All us sharecroppers got for it were do notes at the company store, the back of the platter's bag. But that's done now. Put it behind me when I took the traveling and found me a place in the sun. I figure I earned my belly full of fireflies. There ain't any man big enough to chase him away. Uh, yeah. Maybe, mister, but I never seen a man could travel very far without a belly full of real food. Now you can go right ahead. Amen, Mr. Wishbone. I feel I could wear myself to a jackass's jawbone before you could rattle a pot. <laughs> There's a town a couple of days up the trail. There's some law there, and uh, you can settle whatever uh, you might want to get settled. You're welcome to go along with us if you want. Well... <laughs> Vittles like this passing around, a man deserves to uh, be hoeing rocks if he walked away. <laughs> I see. Pick him up some clothes. Yeah, he can ride in the supply wagon. I'm much obliged, Mr. Paper. Oh, yeah, and uh, I'll have Jesus see about those uh, irons. If you want anything more, you just holler. I'm hollering, Mr. Wishbone, <laughs> loud and clear. <laughs> I'll hot up the pot. <laughs> All right. it look again well what is it what's so heavy that you got on your mind uh, probably nothing but uh, i don't know i never heard of anybody hiring out for bond around here at least ways this side of the mississippi that's funny thing i never heard of anyone around here using leg irons for anything either <laughs> Dehorning you. I keep telling the lie still, but he won't mind. Don't that hurt? Nope. No more than toenail paring hurts you. <laughs> sure looks like it ought to hurt. Well, he's a drink pouring, Mushy. If we don't cut it off, it's going to wind up growing right in his eye. Okay. Go drink this Sometimes you never can tell, Mushy. Sometimes it gets them up here. Hornage. Hornage? Uh, that's the good one. This iron is as hard as a miser's heart. Or a two-faced gal smile. I know one like that down the Nashville way. That female had a look that could stop the big river right in its tracks. <laughs> An old saying, senor. There is no evil which may not be turned into good. And this thing, there can never be anything but evil. Evil and good is a smart man's right and left. Words don't count for nothing, boy. Unless you use them like a gun. 
The only thing that matters is who's on the other end of this. Tall enough to get a haircut and have her, and a shoe shine way down below. Yeah, well, first things first. By the time we get this herd moving. Well, that's me, Mr. Favor. Fastest talking, longest walking, traveling man in this. Friends of yours? Two things a traveling man never collects. Money and friends. Herd's all set to move out, Norton. Herd might be, but uh, I'm afraid we're not. At least not yet. Something I can do for you? One thing. A horse. You name your own price. Uh, sorry, uh, remounts ain't for sale. They'll be walking. At the end of this. Uh, we do our own roping around here, thanks. Now, who are you? What do you want? You got a name to go with that mouth? Oh, yeah. Favor. I'm trail boss here. Right, Mr. Favor. My name's Harger. Matt Harger. Me and my brothers, Luke and Billy Bob. We've been in the saddle 12 hours straight, tracking something belongs to us. We just found it. You put that on me once. You ain't gonna do it again. This side of a six-foot hole. Maybe you'd better take it with you, because I'm afraid that's all you're gonna take with you. It's all in your boss. We're ready to pull out. Man said pick it up. If I was you, I'd take his advice. Till now, this was private. You step in the middle, it'll cost. Why? I should have bond jumper mean that much. Is that what he told you? I ain't running for no bond, cowboy. He's running from a white-headed, bent-legged old rancher. A stubborn old fool that got tall talked out of a bed and board by a, a poor mouth, raggedy, dirt digger. For a few dollars he had in a coffee can. That old man took a pistol with him. Ain't much of them left to keep alive. When we rode out, they were still sucking air. Uh, sure, we helped the sheriff track him down. Helped put that iron on him, too. Because we wanted to make sure that he'd be around for the circuit judge. We stopped helping him when we left the sheriff alone with him. It wasn't an hour until that old sheriff had an eight-inch hole in his back. His prisoner was gone. Asking us to believe that uh, you came after a man like that alone? Where's your posse? Back in Morgan County, waiting. We come along because this is personal, like I said. That old rancher that's left of him. He's our old man. Comes easy, don't it? All you gotta do is say it, and it comes out pure gospel. Jagger. On your own land, wear a string tie, and there ain't no need for writing in books or a big stone law house. Just make your own right. It always comes out of the last and true. Hmm. Sure, I killed man. I used cold steel, too. Back in the Tennessee mountains, they called knives bayonets. I got so good at it, old Billy Breckenridge, he put a pair of stripes on my great coat I was wearing. What did it change? I was still just a poor mouth dirt digger. Bleeding in somebody else's fight, but not good enough to come calling at their parlor door. I lied, Mr. Favor. I'm not a traveling man. I'm traveling trash. I could sprout wings, grow me a halo, and holler up the day of reckoning. And it wouldn't change nothing. I'm just back county dirt digging trash. You take him back to Morgan County. What's going to happen? without the sheriff to take over. What should have happened the first time we run him down? That's why we brought this along. 
so we could think on it all the way. Nope. Now I'm afraid he'll have a night longer to think on it. You see, I told him he could go along with us as far as the marshal had split rock, and that's the way it's going to be. Favor? Tell your story to the law. I can't settle this any more than that piece of rope can settle it. All right, Australia boss. You took your spot right in the middle. Just remember, the men, you're hurt. They're sitting on it with you. Look on it, traveling man. Close your eyes, you'll still see it. It'll still be there, waiting for you. No split rock, no law. Like I said, he's ours. What are you standing around for? We got a herd to get across the river. You want me to spell it out for you? Marshy, get that other wagon moving. Mr. Favor, thank it don't come easy to me. Especially the second time around. But I'm deeply obligated. Save it for a split rock, you may need it. Now, oh, and what I said for them goes for you, too. Why, you think I might try to run off? <laughs> Not with my own personal army in three squares, I ain't. You can bet on that. I am. Yesterday was just him, today it's different, isn't it? What does that mean? Parker was right. You're putting the whole herd on the block just for one man. You got a uh, better way out? I got a better way out? Send him up to Split Rock, or else have the, the marshal come down here. Until it's more than just two sides to a story. Leg iron earns him that much of an edge. Now, do you think we can get moving? Sundown tomorrow, at latest. What about you? I left my rope down there, boy. Just want to make sure I don't get lost. Sundown tomorrow. Now get going. He saw the woman and she looked so fine. He said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. Read about Samson from his birth, the strongest man that ever lived on earth. Read away down in ancient times, he killed 3,000 Philistines. He, he said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, I'd tear the bill. Oh, here, Mark's revival meet. <laughs> Singing don't make saving. It'll take more than a little toe tapping to revise some of the drovers we got on this drive. Except you, of course. Naturally. Except for the halo and the harp, I'm the 10th generation Gabriel. Uh-huh. So that's why that horn of yours goes off so often. 
Mr. Faber, if you're referring to the fact that I lose my temper from time to time, you gotta realize that somebody's gotta keep those lead-headed drovers from eating the wheels right out from under this chuck wagon. Where's Ronnie? Took a little ride. Said he wanted to see that Harger fella some more. Oh, it's about time that boy learned a man like Harger, conversation. Just dead up to a waste of time. Mr. Favor, about twice a day for the last five years, I've been listening to a trail boss friend of mine preach his own pet cattle drive sermon. There's one rule, and only one rule, when it comes to pushing a drive. The man and the herd come first. It won't matter if it's St. Peter himself coming at you. If he's packing trouble, you go the other way. I don't care how you slice it. That traveling friend there is trouble. It don't matter whether Rowdy's right or wrong. Point is, he's just following the advice of that trail boss I made. My way, he said, if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. He called a little boy about three feet tall. Say, place my hands up against the wall. He placed his hands up against a wall and he tore that building down he said and if i had my way he said and if i had my way he said and if i had my way i'd tear the building down <laughs> what took you two so long Oh, that old two-corn steer just wouldn't settle down. The steer, he uh, giving you some trouble? Uh, worse than that, got half the herd walking on eggs. Gets it in his head to start running, he just might take the whole bunch with him. Sounds simple. Just fix him, so he can't cause trouble. I tell you, Jagger, there's three things around here that can't be fixed. Mushy's head, wishbones cooking, that two-corn steer. All right, who's got the cars? I'm going to go, come on. Let's wishbones have got him, I think. Let's go. Oh, she's squeezing the spots isn't going to change him any. Well, I bet a dollar. A dollar? What do you think we are, St. Louis bankers? I said a dollar, and I bet a dollar. Now, uh, you put up or shut up. Put up or what? You heard the man wish. No, just put the green where the funnel is. Funnel? He's uh, having a nice ride? Uh, mostly long. Didn't find Harker anyway. Sort of, kind of didn't think you would. Now, one thing's for sure, he'll be back. A man like that don't give up easy on what he's after. Might be you'd like to give Mr. Matt Almighty Harker his way. Is that it, Mr. Ambrod? Depends on the price tag, Jagger. Big or small, there isn't any price, Rowdy. That's the way it's gonna stay. Unless, of course, you change it, Jagger. Me, Mr. Favor? He was told to stay with a supply wagon. Well, just trying to help. Where in my keep, you might say. That cow that's been giving Mr. Quince and Mr. Scarlet all that trouble, uh, the one with the short horn, he ain't gonna bother you no more. Meaning what? Why, well, just walk him down, went out of the herd, and cut his throat. That way he isn't about to cause a ruckus. I borrowed one of your knives, Mr. Wishbone. Didn't hurt it none. Wipe it off, couldn't clean. Closed up. Everything's fine except one thing. Mm. He's back. With company.
Was that you said about a price tag? We'll turn him in here. Pull everybody off the herd and get him over to the wagons. Look, boss. Now, Rowdy, now. You better get inside, Mr. Jagger. Why, Marcy, don't you know? Man's got friends. There ain't no need to hide. There he is. Sat like a pigeon on a rail. What are we waiting for? Let's take him. Wait. We ain't got nothing against them Texas Samaritans. At least not yet. Man sets down to the play, takes the cards away they come. Them cowpokes just got... They ain't going nowhere. That Jagger ain't worth a shooting fight. Leastways, not to them. Might be seeing's all the believing they'll need. Hold the boys here where the believing's easy. Might be I can make them see sense. Here! I told you, Trail Boss, I'm back. In one way or another, we mean to take what we come for. It stands, Hager. Listen, you got a badge with you up there. Jagger stays put until the law takes it. Boys brought back the word. Paw's dead. Him and that sheriff each had 60 hard years out here. They deserved better than they got. There's a law on that, too, Favor. Now think on it. Think on it real good till sunup tomorrow. Because we'll be coming in then. You stand in the middle, you'll be standing in the middle of a cemetery. Sun up, Favor. Stay with him until you hear different. Hey, Seuss, as soon as you get the Remuda squared away, you get out to the herd, too. Favor? Just like the good book says, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. What their men won't do to keep their lives alive. You've done the right thing, Mr. Faber. Ain't no other way to cure him. We sit up here. Better start doing your cooking now. It's gonna be a long night. Boss. I know, I know. It's not our fight. Not that it makes any difference, but you were so right. Oh, that makes a difference. Hey, Mr. Faber. Keep all the men in the saddle. Make it look like we're getting ready for fireworks come sun up. That ought to hold off Harger long enough. Mr. Faber? What I said still goes. Well, it'll be sooner instead of later. As soon as it gets dark, you and me are riding for Split Rock. By the time Harger and his boys catch on, you'll be standing alongside the law. Either that or starting a fight that nobody can win. Any objections? Anything say, Mr. Faber? Come on, Wish. Let's get moving. I'll be back as soon as the herd's bedded down. I gotta hand it to you, Mr. Ramrod. Push long enough and hard enough, the man's just bound to get his way. Come on, Jagger. It's still an hour before sundown. You can make yourself useful. Unhitch the team.
Favor. Mr. Favor. Mr. Wishful. Uh, he was smiling when he did it. He said the only thing worse than Harger was another sheriff. Or a ramrod with the building in question mark. You gonna be all right, Mr. Roddy? Better get a, something to bandage him with and some water, will you? Uh, it was Jagger. Yeah, I know. That's square, Wish. No. Oh, don't put that man on your conscience. Or it is. You gonna be all right, Mr. Wishful? Of course I'm not gonna be all right. Go get me the cooking wine. Is he gonna be all right, Mr. Rowdy? Well, if this don't fix him, that cooking wine will. Go ahead. And put something on that head.
jump. Don't even think. Just drop it. Mr. Favor, you gotta have some cat in your family tree. No. That old man, he means so much. <laughs> First the cat and you got me, now it's got your tongue. <laughs> the knife, down there. a knife on him. Why? Because he got in my way. Standing between me and my sunset. Because he... he tried to show me the light. <laughs> Preach. It makes my gut turn over. Just like that old rancher and that fool law man. Little loud lousy men trying to fit me on their own straight and narrows with a three-day-old handouts and back door sermons. Pat him on the head. Boot him on his way and wipe the slate clean with lye soap and a shiny clean conscience. It don't get down with me, Favor. I've been someone else's man since the day I took a first step. But not anymore. Not since I set my sights on a sunset with my name on it. I take what I want. And I use whatever rules fit. Mine, yours, Hargers, it don't matter none. Just so I get what I figure this little old world owes me for being born. All right, Jagger. You can start collecting. Right now. <laughs> Step at a time, Jack. You remember? That's what you're gonna do. All the way back. Uh, not me. Not me. There's only one more way I'm going back. And you're not man enough to do it. <laughs> You gotta eat something. Well, I will, but not until I'm ready. You'd think I was sick or something. So you're ready. Send your favors coming in. All right, Favor, where is he? Well, he's fine, but I can't say the same for you. Yeah, let him get away. Jaggers, it's split rock. It's like I, I promised him he'd be. Anything else you want to know, you can, you can ask the sheriff there. Now, wait a minute, Favor. Let's go, Matt. Let's go. Hit him up and move him out. If I'd meant hit him up and move him 
around, I would have said, head him up and move him out. All I want now is some coffee, hot and black. Hot and black and uh, wishbone thick. It's not the best range west of the Pecos, is it? Well, you take what you can get. Besides, you'll hit grade the other side of Denver. Yeah, but what I can't understand is how come that passion wants a bad thing? Coal dust. Mining did it. Let me take a look at the map, will you? Take about four days to go around the hill via the old arroyo. What do you think? Well, if it isn't dried out. The gray's on the other side, I mean. That's what we're gonna find out right now. finally running our way. We better check and see how much undercut those coal miners did. Quince, while you're down there, check that mine shaft entrance. See if those miners went clear through to the Arroyo. Simon, these old dugouts ain't too safe. downright unhappy. You didn't get enough to eat. How about another order of biscuits from my friend Jerry here? He didn't get much to eat back in our Albuquerque days. He's a poor skinny fella. Look at that. i never seen either one of you two do anything but eat. Take your plate up there to Cookie. It isn't Cookie, Rankin. It's Mr. Wishbone to the likes of you. What likes is that? Likes that hasn't done a day's work since you joined up, that's what. Sure have, Mr. Cookie Wishbone. I've been out scouting some of our beautiful scenery, son. Scouting? Scrounging, you mean? Picking over what you think those miners might have left behind. Oh, what they left behind is a mighty interesting little souvenir. Right over there. That miner's shack, nothing would have been left there. Nothing comes in some funny-looking jugs in sometimes. Did you ever hear of blasting, Joe? 
Have you ever seen any gun cotton? No, but I've seen big wool mouths like you. You oughtn't to call Ed names. He's off, Jerry. You ought to be careful how you talk to people, Mr. Wishbone. I want every man off the herd. Wishbone, get picks and shovels, anything we can dig with. What's the matter? We got a mine cave in. Well, let's go get me a horse. What's the matter with you two? Haven't you got horses? You didn't say who was in that cave in. Winston Simon, let's move. <laughs> Try to get it going, huh? This other tunnel's not sealed off. Give me a hand in here. Anybody bring a canteen? Fill this up. All right, good. I'll be around here somewhere. Try clearing along here, huh? But be careful. Trying to get some of this slide back. I think I found it. Okay. To make a Wish, let me have that lamp. through to the other end. Look, Jed, I don't know anything about mining. The only thing I'm worried about is Quince and Simon. Rowdy, I used to work the coal mines when I was a kid. This here is a cross end. It means air. It also means that we might be able to find out whether or not the others are still alive. But this thing is useless. However, if there's one cross vent, there's got to be another. Well, but supposing there's another one and it's closed too. Stop supposing, Wish. Rich, let me have that lamp here. That one go through? It goes through all right. What made the lamp flicker up like that? Same thing that made me quit mining when I was a kid. Coal gas. I helped carry out ten men, killed by the same kind of stuff that's sealed up in there. Yeah, including Quince and Simon. Maybe we can get them to hear us. Jim! Simon! I'm talking to you through an air shaft, a pipe. Can you see it? If you can see it, rap on it real easy. Wish. Jiggle that lamp back and forth. Jim, can you see this light we're flashing? Try it. Quit! 
Simon! Quick, you old galoot! Who is it? It's me, Simon. Is Jim with you? Yeah. Are you hurt? No, no, no. It's not me. It's Quint. I can't stop the bleeding. A bear clawed his shoulder. You better tell me what to do, Wish. He's unconscious. All right, Simon. Now this is what you do. First you drag Quince over to this air hole so he can breathe. Then you get some dirt and you put it on where he's bleeding. Make a kind of a poultice. Then you press it till he stops bleeding. When you get all of that done, you rack and let me know. All right, right. We're going to have to get the men to help dig him out of there. Well, it'll fall just as fast as they can dig. Uh, you got some way figured to get in there to him? Quint, it's hurt pretty bad. We've got to get him out as soon as possible. Let's start digging. Yeah, that timber looks like the best spot. Let's brace into it, huh? Let me try to sink this pick behind it first. Sure, this way. The other side's caving away. We gotta get them out of there some way, but not by digging. Is there any chance we could tunnel in from the side, maybe? Time, Rowdy, time. Those gases in the downdraft, they'd kill our boys in a couple hours. You sure? I'm sure. If we have to ride all the way back to Whitewash to get help, it could take a half a day. Wait a minute. There's only one way to get them men out of that mine, and that is to blast them out. Is that right, Jim? Well, we don't have any dynamite to blast with. But I ain't talking about dynamite. Well, what then? Well, that stuff I found up at that old miner's shack. Uh, gun shells, what I think it is. Only thing is, you set off that by concussion. Whereas with dynamite, you set it off with a fuse. And you get me a jug of that, and I could blow this here caved-in mine wide open. Just like I was blasting ahead for track. We got a chance at Rowdy. Okay, I'll ride up and get it. <laughs> <laughs> you got something on your cross, spit it out, reckon. Well, I, I said that stuff would blow sky high, but it'll also go off just by the touch of your little finger at the wrong time. Now, you can't haul that by horseback. And you can't haul it one man alone on foot, either. You got to tie that down good and proper. That's powerful stuff. You got to have men to help you haul it, too, like uh, me and Jerry here. Are you just talking your mouth off, or have you ever hauled? Didn't I tell you I railroaded? Ed, I never done no railroading like you. Now, you just do what I say, boy. Now, Mr. Yates here, I figure he's a... Uh, He's going to pay a little bit for this. How much? Well, uh, Jerry and I got to have me a steak. Aaron, that pit pipe's smelling awful bad. It's just a pocket of gas. That's the way it builds up. You tell Simon and Quince to stay down and keep away from it. Wish. You got a blacksmith bellows that'll fit that pipe in there? Why, sure. In the supply wagon. Phillips, hightail it down there and bring it up here, huh? How much? Mm. 500 for the two of us. All right. Wish. You keep talking to them through that air vent. Say anything, you know, just keep talking so they don't pass out. Where do we blow that blast stuff? Well, you got to dig a hole back there right above where the cave-in is. So it'll blow down and then out. Well, you heard him. Get it ready for us. The rest of you keep clear of this tunnel so the air can get through it. That blast stuff better be there. Oh, it's there. But it's going to be another thing getting it on up here. We'll get it up here. Let's move out. Set it in there easy and steady now. Don't let it swing. You want to save as much of that water as you can. That's right. Now lift it slow and steady. Looks like 
like them varmints is aiming to steal us blind. You shoot that gun off and you're gonna blow yourself up with us. Keep them hands up. Come on, Jerry, let's take him. No. Uh, you own this here place? Yep. I also own that jug of juice you got there, too. Bought it off some coal diggers. Any of you varmints know what you're messing around with? Yeah, I do. How do we know that you own it, though? Because I got the drop on you, that's why. It's like the man said, if you got it and they want it, you only need two things, an old blunderbuss and a gunny sack to carry the money off. Look, if this old coot really owns this stuff, he knows he's gonna blow himself to Hades if he shoots that gun off. I got papers, you wanna see them? How much do you want for it? Including that old wagon over there. I wouldn't sell it to you, sonny. That gun jail's mighty dangerous. Look, I got two men that are trapped in a mine. Now, I'll give you $50 for it, that's all I have. Wait a minute, how old is that stuff? Well, it's been around here quite some time. Uh, don't reckon I'd know exact. Well, when I was working railroad, we didn't use no old stuff. We liked our stuff kept nice and cold. This stuff's been sitting out in the sun too long. Well, suit yourself. But you're gonna have to get off of my property and put that gun gel back where you got it. He's right, son. It is kind of old. Well, I'm gonna buy it no matter how old it is. Well, that wagon might be or might rusty. Fat back, look at this. <laughs> Hi, did Jerry get a nice calm horse out of the Ramuda wagon broke, huh? You hear that, fat back? Now, wait a second. You didn't sell us no blast cap yet. I thought you knew all there was to know about gun gel. You ain't working no railroad gang now. You're gonna have to smash it with our cap. That is, if you get it that far. <laughs> Come on, fat back, let's tell you. Old as sin and ready to rot out from underneath us unless these traces go first. That old horn toad thief. Some water, Ed. What's the matter with you? Is your mouth dry already? A job like this is like a battle. Anybody with any sense has got a dry mouth. Except maybe somebody who had a big mouth. All right, let's get this thing tied down so we can get moving. And then this big old rustler, he said to the sheriff, Beeves, why well, I thought they was Texas groundhogs. <laughs> Don't you laugh, Simon. No, I know you can hardly help it, but don't laugh, Simon. Might use up air. Simon, just tap for me. Jim? Just tap for me, Simon. Tap for me, Simon. Simon?
got to keep lifting it high all the way. There's still a few places I want to lift to see. about me when I need one. Something don't smell right. Jim? Jim? He's all right, Rich. Jim? Roddy's going to get help. It's only going to be a little while now. But when the time comes, I'll tell you what to do. You hear me, Jim? I hear you, Rich. Now, don't talk anymore. Simon? Is Jim good enough so you can go around Take Squid down there, see what you can find. What I mean is, I want to tell him some of the stories I used up on you. All right, Wish. I'll do anything not to hear him twice. Now, can you keep awake next to this pipe? Now, don't try moving that herd on. You just stay there until I get back. It's about time I had a look around here. See if there's another shaft out. A pocket of air someplace. Simon. Stay low to the ground. The air's better. Look, if you get dizzy now, you, you turn back. I don't think I could drag you far with this bum arm of mine. Now, don't you worry about me, Jim. I'm not afraid of the dark. But you ain't your fool. Uh, where can I go now? Yeah, you do it anyway. Be careful. Oh, if I am held up, well, there ain't no point in worrying Wishbone. He might think I'm trying to get away from his jokes. Friend of yours. How'd I know he's gonna run off, Mr. Yates? Jerry's a good boy. It's just them rattlesnakes and things. You got to admit he's strong, though. Yeah, well, strong or not, we've lost him and the horse, too. Well, makes no difference. We'll just have to move on without him. Oh, wait a minute. You ain't paying me to do the job of two men and a horse. Look, you get on your feet, Rankin. 
We're moving out or else I'll tie that bottle to your head. You had, I'd, I'd still be no good. Get back in the wagon. You gonna haul or not? Yes, sir. Get on the front. So why I come back? Five hundred dollars. No, that's for Ed. Because me and Ed, we're gonna, we're gonna get a start in Denver. We're gonna live big and easy, and we, we won't have to run no more. Run from what? Uh, nothing. good trail boss that's right i did hear you say it was tied real good it didn't come untied rankin it snapped and on your side too why don't you get rid of him we don't need him yeah well unfortunately quince and simon do whimper about it. Hey, trail boss! How about trading us off back there? I can't balance this cow hand. He's right, Rowdy. We don't balance. Maybe we better switch around. All right, you come up front with me. Jerry, why don't you go back and help your friend? You didn't make that mad, did you? You shouldn't make that mad. He's my friend. Anywhere else, son? Not the best pocket I have. There's no way out, Jim. I don't think it's so, Simon. 
I'm counting on it. Thanks to him. Moving gun gel on a broken down wagon like this, the thing could have blown up in our faces. You don't know that? Hey, we're almost up at the top. Yeah, but we're not at the mine, so let's get back on the wagon. My canteen's dry. Go give me some water. I said back on the wagon. You do what I say. I said get back on that wagon. Uh, we ain't going any further. And besides, we want more money. You get all the money you're gonna get. Well, then we're gonna quit. <clears throat> Daddy, help! I'm coming, Ed! Get your noses up against this pipe and breathe. It's going to take them a couple of minutes to set it, so breathe while you can. All right, step out of the way, will you? Come on. Get right in the tunnel. I'll stick it right in there. Now, Simon, I just hope you can hear me. Here's what you do. When I finish talking, you grab Jim and drag him back into that mine. And both of you get low and stay back. Come on, sir. Get out of here, I said. Hey, come out of here! 
Judd, you get out there with the rest of them. And leave you to swing the gel? Uh, sorry, Rowdy. Look, somebody's got to do it, and I'm electing me. Now get moving. And you always pick the soft jobs for yourself, don't you, huh? I had a, a kind of dream, Ed. Shut up. It was when Mr. Yates dumped me in them rocks. It's about this rattlesnake. I seen him. He had a face. And it was a face of a man. Didn't I tell you to keep your mouth shut, boy? Huh? Come on, you two. Get him over. was yours. You always called me no good, didn't you? Jerry, I didn't mean nothing. It was just talk. Now, you and I are pals now. Everything from now on is going to be 50-50. Why, you just wait till we get to Denver. Oh, boy. I wasn't always a no good at Ed. I never killed anybody till I met you. you came when you did. Because if I had to listen to one more wishbone jokes, I'd have gone plumb out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about those two, Jerry and Rankin. Some things it just doesn't pay to think about. Did he really throw that gel? Jerry, I mean. Never saw it happen. Can't know now or ever, I suppose. 